Hello everyone, my name is Elizabeth and I'm a Youth Services Librarian at the Westmont Public Library. And today we're going to explore chemistry principles in this fun STEAM activity, Salt Crystal Snowflakes. So we are going to create a super saturated solution and create our own crystallized snowflakes using pipe cleaners. Hopefully you can see all the wonderful salt crystals that have formed on my pipe cleaner snowflake. Now to get started, you're gonna to wanna to gather some supplies. The only supply I don't have on the table with me is the boiling water in my electric tea kettle. Now using um, one of your adults to help you or an older sibling, you can boil water on the stove and add your salt to the boiling water. I am going to use my electric tea kettle to create my super saturated solution. Now, what will you need? You're gonna to wanna to gather some jars. If you wanna do more uh, than one of these fantastic salt crystal snowflakes. So you can grab a large pasta jar and rinse it out or just a small jam jar, this mason jar here. You're also gonna want some pipe cleaners. Now, um, if you don't have string, uh, so I am going to also use some string Ooh, it rolled off the table, uh, some string to suspend my snowflake in my jar. But if you don't have string at home, you can just use one of your pipe cleaners, use that to suspend it in the jar and create your snowflake at the end of the pipe cleaner with um, other pieces. So uh, otherwise, grab some string, a pair of scissors, salt, of course, and a spoon and finally a craft stick or popsicle stick uh, to act uh, to help you suspend your snowflake in your jar. Uh, you can also use a pencil, pen, marker, or paintbrush if you don't have one of these at home. So let's get started. Gather all of your supplies um, and we will create our super saturated solution our pipe cleaner snowflake, and then put it all together to watch this amazing chemical reaction happen. All right, let's start and make our pipe cleaner snowflake. So you're gonna want to cut three pieces that are equal in length. It's okay if they're one's a little longer, we can trim our snowflake. So we're gonna cut three pieces that are roughly equal length, okay? And then you can just take them and wrap them around each other to create your snowflake. And it's okay if, um, if some of the pieces are a little longer because we can trim them once you've done, once you've wrapped everything once you've so now you're going to want to create a snowflake that fits in your jar so the smaller the jar the smaller the snowflake so we can go ahead and trim our snowflake so that all of the sides look about even and then we are going to take our string you don't need a very long piece of string. And in order to tie it onto our snowflake, we're gonna create a loop and make our knot. So you're gonna to wanna to take your string and create an O like this, a circle, and then tuck the little end into your circle, grab your snowflake, and then pull, creating a knot at the top of one of the ends, like so. Now, trim off the excess string and there you go. You're all ready to suspend your snowflake in your jar. Let's go ahead and create our super saturated solution. For that, you're going to need very hot, very, very hot tap water or boiling water from a tea kettle or on your stove. So this part, you're gonna want an adult to help you because there is a little bit of a risk. If you're not careful, you could burn yourself because the water is going to be very, very hot. So make sure you're extra cautious 
and leave room at the top of your jar to move it to a windowsill or someplace where it won't be disturbed as the crystals form. So uh, you're going to want to make sure because once you fill it with the hot water, the jar is going to become very, very hot. So make sure you use caution and ask for help from an adult or older sibling when you start this process. Let's go grab our hot water. So I've gone ahead and grabbed my boiling water from my electric tea kettle. What is a super saturated solution? Well, a super saturated solution is a solution that is made out of the solution, in our case water, and the soluble, something that is going to dissolve into the water. Now, what happens is that so much salt will dissolve in water. So the colder the water, the less salt will dissolve. The hotter the water, the more salt will dissolve. So that's why we want boiling water for this experiment because we can get much more salt to dissolve and therefore form more crystals as it evaporates. So to create our super saturated solution, I'm gonna start by adding a lot of salt. So you can add about a half cup of salt Ooh, to start with in a container about this size. So you can see I've added lots of salt in there. Now I'll pour in my boiling water. You can see how hot it is. The glass is fogging and water, and you can see the steam. So be very careful. You don't wanna fill it all the way to the top. You wanna to leave some room so that it'll be easier for you to move this container. But the best thing is, is to allow it to fully cool down before you touch it and move it to your windowsill or the place that's flat will be out of the way so you could observe the crystals forming. So I'll start by stirring. Now, if you're going to be boiling water on the stove, you'll know you've added enough salt to create an oversaturated or super saturated solution when crystals start forming at the top of the water and along the sides of the pot. You can add, once you add that initial half cup of salt, you can add teaspoon or tablespoon uh, sizes of salt to your mixture until either those crystals are forming if you're boiling water on the stove or if you are pouring hot water into a jar from your tap or your tea kettle, you start seeing salt gathering on the bottom. It stops dissolving in the hot water. So keep stirring so that all of that salt can dissolve. Now, what will happen if you add too little salt? Well, if you add too little salt, it will take much longer for the salt crystals to form. They'll start forming first on your string as the water evaporates through the string, and then finally on your pipe cleaner snowflake. Now, if you put too much salt in your solution, then it could take up to 24 hours. So just one day for the salt to form, not only on your string, but on the sides of your glass and on your pipe cleaner snowflake. So what you could do is try measuring to add a little more to this experiment, uh, different amounts of salt and seeing how long it takes for the salt crystals to form as the water evaporates. So oh, it looks like most of that. So I'm going to add a little bit more. You can measure out with a spoon. Um, but since I'm not keeping track of the amounts to see how much salt is needed and how quickly salt crystals will form, I'm just going to measure out. I can just pour in some and then stir. So stir, stir, stir. Now finally, once you think that as much of the salt as possible will dissolve in your hot water, you can go ahead and lower in your snowflake and then wrap the string around your craft stick and let it sit. Like I said, if you have put too little salt, it could take a while for the water to evaporate and those salt crystals to form. If you've put a lot, you'll see that chemical reaction happen right away within 24 hours. I'm interested to see what will happen with all of these different mixtures. I hope you have fun with this STEM experiment and get some wonderful salt crystal snowflakes. 
You can add Mod Podge to these to preserve them longer or just enjoy them for the time being. Hang them in your window or maybe even on um, a fridge or on um, another piece of decoration in your house. Uh, I had a lot of fun sharing this experiment with you today. I hope to see you and your families in the library soon.